How is the, how is everyone doing? Having fun? So it's been incredible. Um, awesome conference. Good people. A lot of good talks. Good food. What will make uh, this conference more better? <coughs> beer. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I'm sure everyone loves beer. So yeah, so I'm here to talk about uh, using Ruby for building uh, native iOS apps. Um, and let's see how we proceed in that direction. So uh, before I do that, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Amit. I work for uh, McKinsey. Uh, and here is my introduction. Uh, just quick introduction about me. But uh, going that, uh, before I start the session, I would like to do a quick survey of the crowd, get a sense of people. How many of you are Objective-C developers? Just a few. Objective-C? Um, keep your hand, hands up. Um, and how many of you love Objective-C? Uh, Objective-C is in a very good language. Um, but uh, when two years back, uh, there was a client project I was working on, um, and they wanted to build a native iOS app. I tried learning Objective-C, and this is what I experienced. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, in a, it's in a very good language, um, Objective-C, but my experience was not very good. Um, my brain started hurting, looking at the verbal code, being a Ruby developer, it was very tough for me. But yes, uh, you know, just late summer last year, uh, Laurent Sansonetti, creator of MacRuby, launched Ruby Motion, which is essentially, uh, uh, which helps you to build native iOS apps uh, using Ruby, the, the famous, incredible developers, programmers language. So let me let me quickly talk about what Ruby Motion is. Um, essentially, let's re define Ruby Motion. Laurent says that um, it's a revolutionary tool chain for building native iOS apps, and uh, the way I define it is it's a triumph of utilitarianism that reduces suffering. <laughs> and we'll see uh, throughout this session. We'll see how it reduces suffering, and what are the moments of happiness that we as Ruby developers can have uh, using Ruby Motion. So let's get a little deeper. Um, and as, as I said, please keep account of uh, the moments of happiness that we see using Ruby for um, iOS development. So first of all, uh, essentially, uh, you know, must have uh, heard about Mac Ruby, right? Everyone is a Ruby developer, so we know what Mac Ruby is. So what Laurent did was he forked Mac Ruby um, and he uh, kind of re-implemented the whole Ruby runtime, um, um, which sits on top of the Objective-C runtime that can see, kind of helps you a lot um, in essentially using all the constructs and everything that you have in Objective-C Cocoa framework. Um, and, and he used LLVM technology that compiles your Ruby code statically um, that can be deployed on your uh, iOS device. And then essentially, it just becomes a, a machine code that essentially he, what he used, what he did was you have a Ruby code. It, it uses LLVM technology to compile, statically compile that Ruby code into assembly language specific to the architecture and processor. And then that is converted into optimized machine code. So we'll see how, what are the various steps of the build process when actually your Ruby code is being compiled and deployed to, um, or you can push it to your iOS device. So that gives you a flexibility, as I said, and a Ruby runtime is tightly integrated with Objective-C runtime. That gives you a flexibility to kind of use all the Objective-C classes directly in your Ruby code as if they are Ruby classes. Um, not only that, you can share all the objects of your Ruby and Objective-C and vice versa with no performance cost. It's, it's not kind of a bridge that we are used to um, in, in like PhoneGap or, or Monotouch. They are, they are kind of bridge solution where um, you have to write code in JavaScript or something and then there is a bridge that will, that will kind of map your code to the actual native uh, co controls or constructs. What Ruby, do, what Ruby Motion does is, it, you are actually writing it in Ruby, but actually you are, your code is being compiled into machine code that your iOS device understands. Same ancestors as Objective-C. So if you take look at string class, the ancestors of Objective-C mutable string class is the same as the ancestors of Ruby string class. Yeah, so objects can, can be shared with no performance. So let's look at examples um, to validate that. The first one is essentially the inheritance and mixings that we have in Ruby. Um, so we see that the MyView class is actually inheriting from UIView, which is Objective-C class. And you can essentially use it directly with no performance or anything. As I said, it's not a bridge. You can also use mixins in your class, um, which is great. So that was the first moment of happiness that I felt. 
yay, I can directly use Objective-C cl class directly in my Ruby code. Awesome. Um, we as Ruby developers, we love to look at other constructs of Ruby that are supported in Ruby motion. So let's look at them. Um, the second one is um, the block. We love blocks. We love passing blocks around in Ruby. So essentially, Objective-C supports blocks. So you can have um, a block that can, that here what is happening is you are actually making a call to animate with duration method of Objective-C uh, Coco framework where you are actually passing in few parameters and if you see, if you have not noticed, um, that's the signature of the method. So Objective-C developers will understand what that means. But essentially, it's not just the name of the method that is a signature. Uh, the named parameters that are being passed makes the whole um, signature of the method unique. So this was a little uh, difficult for me initially because I was getting used to that. Um, it was, um, my brain was hurting because I couldn't understand why you'll have you know, name parameters. But then eventually I understood the importance of it, the way it does is, and let's look at actually another example to explain it. Uh, that's yes, the moment of happiness. You can use blocks. There's some noise, which I call noise, but they are actually uh, part of the framework. So if you see this method, the first argument is actually that you're passing in a, a variable, but the second and the third arg arguments are name parameters. You are actually passing in the event and the point. Uh, this is actually a code snippet from one of the library that I'm working on uh, for building charting, like chart visualizations for uh, native APIs. So there I'm using a uh, core plot, which is another Objective-C library. So if you see that, you know, this is the actually signature of the method. Let's look at um, um, an important uh, construct. Um, in Ruby, we have a lot of uh, metaprogramming going on. So is Ruby Motion su supporting all those metaprogramming constructs that we are used to? to define methods, the, the const get, um, the instance variable get, all those you know, nifty things that we do in uh, Ruby. So yes, um, this the, the heading is can I use eval? You know we are used to eval. For me, eval is not very important because I don't use eval in my Ruby code, uh, you know, every day. But yes, there are other other things that I definitely use. I do care about method missing. I do care about define method, alias method, instance eval, class eval, const get, const define. These are the things that I care about, and they are all supported in Ruby motion, which is which is great. One thing that I do miss in Ruby motion is the require. It's not supported. That's sad. The reason why it is not supported, um, and probably Laurent is going to work on that. The reason why it is not supported is because it is statically compiled. It's not an interpreter. Ruby motion is not an interpreter. It's statically compiled. So the build system has to know well in advance all the files that your application is going to use. So essentially, you have to inform when the actually the build system is compiling your code, it needs to know what all files, what all classes are there in your application. So that's that's where you cannot use, it cannot, you cannot dynamically have load a file directly in your application because Apple does not allow shipping interpreter to your iOS device. So require is not there. Eval is not there, but for me, it doesn't matter. Um, move on to the next thing. Uh, how, do you, how, do I, how do I get actually Ruby motion? So, Ruby Motion is a licensed product, um, and uh, you'll have to. Unfortunately, there is no trial version. You'll have to purchase it. Um, it costs a little bit of money, but uh, I'm sure it's worth it. You you are going to love it. Um, now, stay tuned for the you know, the last slide of the presentation. There is some surprise for you guys. So after you have uh, paid money, downloaded and installed. Uh, Ruby machine on your, on your machine. How do I start playing with it? Well, it comes with a, oh yeah, so the motion command. You create your first application. You say motion is, is, is basically the, the core of everything. You have motion create, support, motion, and other things that we'll talk about. So once you say motion create name of your application, essentially what you're doing is you're creating a skeleton of application. Uh, let's look at various files that are created as part of that. Uh, the first one is, yeah, so you create an application. The first one is your rake file. So rake file is your file where you have all the configuration options that your application will have, and we'll talk about it later in the uh, upcoming slides. The second one is app delegate. That is a, so the way Cocoa Framework works is you have a delegate pattern. So everything is delegate. Um, I hardly see inheritance um, in, in Objective-C implementation, but 
we as Ruby developers love that. So we'll see that most of the, most of the time. App delegate is the the delegation entry point for Cocoa Framework to your application. Um, next one is so by default Ruby Motion ships with a uh, spec like framework called Mac Bacon, um, and we will see how it works. And when you say rake spec because it's a rake file, you essentially are running all the test cases. So we'll talk about what are the various features of, of testing that um, Ruby Motion supports. So that's that's where you get an application. Your application is, is, the skeleton is ready and then you can start working. So if you run, so how do we actually run the application? Running the application is just running the rake command. So you go to the root of your application. In the previous slide we saw this is the root of the application. You go inside the name of the application. You go inside that and you just say rake. You just say rake and your application, what happens is the build system that is part of the root tool chain, it essentially, in your rake file, you have specified all the files that your application will have. So it picks up all those files, statically compiles them, links all the external libraries that you might be using in your application. We'll see all the external libraries that are part of the tool chain or you can use gems or other ways of using external libraries. Um, and then packages them together and fires up the simulator on your machine and your application is deployed on the simulator. We'll see a quick demo of that um, in the upcoming slides. So yeah, that's a build process. It's compiled, statically compiled. It's linked with external libraries. You package them together. And there's a fourth step code signing, which is required if you have to ship your application or ship your um, app to the App Store. You have to sign it with Apple Developer License. So yeah, so Ruby Motion has three components. The first one is the runtime, compiler, and the build system. Um, the one good news is that the build system has been open sourced. Uh, there has been a lot of contribution by the Ruby community to the build system, and, and uh, good things have been added to the build system. Um, that's pretty good. So let's look at the various rake tasks. If you say rake dash t, um, these are the options that you see. And let's, let's look at um, the various options that it gives. The first one is the default that we already sh saw. You say rake and you your application is built um, and then it runs in the simulator. The second one is rake spec, which is a pretty powerful command um, and we are all used to it. Uh, it runs the test cases of your Ruby Motion application. Um, rake clean. Um, how many of us are uh, Java developers or has done Java? So they know what a clean build is essentially. So um, you know you do a clean build of the project, it deletes all the compiled stuff and then your application is rebuilt. There are two important things, rake archive development and release. These are the process where you actually create an IPA file, uh, which is uh, when you are doing in development mode, uh, you can ship, move your IPA file to your device and then test it out. And release will, essentially the important difference between development and release is um, when you are doing a rake archive release, a lot of optimization is done by the build system, minifying all the code and everything is done uh, for creation of the IPA file that can be shipped to App Store. That's why they are separate development and release. This is a recent addition to the tool chain. It's pretty powerful and, and we'll see why it is powerful. So essentially what happens with Rake, Rake static, you have a Ruby motion application um, that you have coded all in Ruby, but you may have, because Objective-C had been, has been around for such a long time, you may have a legacy application, but you don't want to code it in Objective-C anymore. You want to use Ruby motion. So what Rake static does is, um, it will base create a static library with a .a extension um, and that static library can be essentially ex imported in your Xcode and you can directly use all Ruby classes that you have in your Objective-C application, which is incredible because now you are coding into Ruby, but still your application can sustain. You don't have to rewrite everything. You have to just enhance the things that you want to add, more features. You code it in Ruby and still you can essentially use it directly uh, you know, you know, Objective C, which is great because um, I can use my Ruby classes in Objective C. Awesome. Let's look at uh, the next one is Rake Config, which is really important because uh, when you are learning it, you need to know what are the various configuration options that your application has. So, it's a big, big list. Let's look at the ones that you'd be interested when you are actually learning it for the first time. The build directory, this is the directory, this is very important directory that is used by um, the build system to store all the build files, the, the, the statically compiled ones. 
The next is the app delegate class. This is the default um, entry point, as I said, app delegate. But you can change it to any class that you want. The deployment target, whether you want for iOS 6, 5, the version that you are interested in or you're building for. The device family, it's important, uh, where you specify what are the various um, devices that are supported by the app. It can be iPhone. By default, it is iPhone. It can be iPhone plus iPad. It can be just iPad or both. This is a very important thing where you sp specify app.files. Sp with files, you mention all the files that your application has. So by default, we saw that you know the, the app delegate class is added. So all the files that are inside app directory are by default picked up by the build system. If you have any other directories that you want to modularize your code and that has to stay outside for some reason, outside your app directory, then you have to inform the build system saying that, okay, these are the files that are outside the app directory. Please in include it when you're actually compiling them. The interface orientation, portrait landscape, all good stuff. The name of your application that uniquely identifies it. The spec directory, uh, where you have the, all the test cases. Uh, apart from there, are other various options um, which you may not be interested in initially, but when you're learning it, this these are the, the things that I feel is extremely important. The one thing that I love, um, and we as Ruby developers, we would like to control everything from command line. We don't want to go to an uh, interface to build something. So, repo, which is a powerful construct of Ruby motion, you can control everything from the command line, even building, building your interface, your code, everything. So, let's look at, look at a quick demo of that. So, essentially, what, what I'm doing is um, I'm, doing, I'm just running rake. It, it is doing the building, simulating, um, the app will be, by default, with the, it's a default app that we created with the motion create command. I added a few more things that I'll, I'll, I'll show it. Um, it's controller, but actually before, before I go there, let me, oh, sorry. I would like to show the code. So, yeah, so that's, that's a code, that's a, the app delegate class that we saw, uh, the point of entry. By default, uh, these lines will not be there. When you create an application, the only thing that you see is true. That has to be passed back to the framework saying that your application, app delegate class is returning back true. So that's a return value. These things I have added where what I'm doing is I'm creating a window, I'm creating a controller, and I mean, I'm telling window that the root view controller is the, the controller that we created. And then I'm making and telling the window that you'll have to be visible when the application launches. That's all. Um, it's part of the, the code that I've added. One more thing that I've added is I've used bundler. We'll see how we can use bundler in Ruby motion um, in the upcoming slides. So what I'm doing in the demo is I'm going to grab the controller object from command line and I'm going to do some changes to the interface. We'll build interface in the demo. Let's see that. So, rake is fired. It's built, it's being simulated. And the simulator will pop up and it has nothing because it was a blank application. I'm, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm grabbing the instance variable of the controller from the command line and we'll do some changes to the view of the controller and you'll see that the magic okay the controller is there it has one view um, and and it has a, no subviews so let's change the background color of the of the of the view from command line. So I'm using a, a UI color with a white color variable, and the the screen changes, the interface changes with, with the background color. Now we are adding another control, which is a UI label control. I love REPL because now what what I can do is you know I can play around with with adjusting things from the command line, and then I know the flow of the commands that I've added that I can 
put directly to my code. So it is creating a frame um, and positioning it. And then this label will be added to your view. So we add a sub view to the view. The text of that uh, is going to be awesome Ruby, con Ruby conference in Australia. Woohoo! So you have it now. Huh? The label appears. There's one another way that you can essentially do that. What I'm doing is I'm pressing command uh, key and then I take my drag my mouse to the simulator. You saw that the area got highlighted with a red border. Now that particular object is available to the uh, console or uh, REPL where you can see that I said self is UI level object, self dot frame and self dot text. So self dot text returns back the, the body of text and I can change that from command again. So that, that's what, you know, it, it's ex extremely powerful. Um, you can do, you know, crazy stuff from command line, which is, which is what we love. Moving on. Moment of happiness. Did we keep a count of moment of happiness? Four. Four. Can we ask you a question? Sure. Oh yeah, they are. they are. Now they are, yes. And also, um, the convention in Objective-C is to use camel case. Yes. So there's a lot of camel case in the Ruby code and we're used to um, snake case. Right. Is that interchangeable as well or is there a convention? It, does, it doesn't care. So, you know, uh, answering your first question, uh, you can use interchange new and alloc, but, but I prefer when I'm making a, a call to um, Objective-C classes, I prefer using alloc because I'm not sure what crazy stuff it is doing internally. So I prefer doing it alloc. And when I'm making an instance of my Ruby class, I prefer doing new. Um, and uh, you can have a mix of, there is a lot of things. It's all op opinions. Um, you can have an opinion where you can use camel case or snake case or whatever you like. But if you have to, you know, it's again, the balance that I have is if I'm coding it in Ruby, full Ruby code with no calls, uh, or use of Objective-C classes, then I prefer doing it the way that I love, which is Ruby. But the, wherever I have to mix it together, I'll mix it together with the Objective-C classes because they don't understand, you know, the, the uh, camel case stuff. Right. Debugging, um, you know, uh, this is a, a recent addition to uh, Ruby Motion. It was pretty painful uh, when I initially started. Debugging was not supported. So the only way that we, you know, I was to debug was the print statements and then go back to simulator, go to call REPL. So yeah, so when you do a print statement in your code, um, you can see that on the uh, in REPL, in the command line. So that was the only way that I could figure out or the console logs if the, your application is crash, crashed. Um, the recent addition is debugging. It uses GDB technology. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know about GDB. Oh yeah, very good. No, I thought you asking. You know about GDB? <laughs> yeah, so GDB is, is a, a very low-level te technology. It, it, it helps you to see um, when the program is executing, it helps you to see what is what was happening when your program was executing on off, or what happened uh, when your program crashed. It, it's pretty powerful. Um, you can, from the command line, so f with, with your rake debug command, what you can do is you can figure out what was happening when your code was, you know, when your code actually crashed. It uses DOF uh, file format for debugging. Uh, but you know, there is a good news. Ruby Mine recently launched a newer version of uh, their IDE, which supports Ruby Motion. And interestingly, they support debugging from the IDE, which is pretty cool because you don't have to go on command line to you know, do the debugging stuff. If you prefer that, you can do it from the um, IDE itself, which is another moment of happiness because I am able to debug my code pretty easily. Um, external libraries. This is extremely important because um, you know we we have to use external libraries. We we prefer using external libraries because there has been so much of investment that people have done 
not only in Ruby, but in Objective-C world as well. So let's look at the, the various options. The first option is using Ruby gems, yes. You can use Ruby gems in Ruby version. The objectives, existing Objective-C libraries that, that are out there, you can directly use in your Ruby motion code. Um, you can Cocoa Pods, this, we'll talk about what Cocoa Pods are. And the, the fourth option is Native-C. You can directly use nat Native-C code in your Ruby motion application. The first option is uh, Ruby motion gems. Uh, the bad news, you cannot use all the Ruby gems that we have in MRI, Rubinius, or JRuby for that matter. And the only reason is because the require is not supported. So essentially we are used to you know, requiring everywhere. The build system has to know that what all files or classes that you are going to load in an application. So you, the, you have to write a separate gems. And there has been a lot of contribution from the Ruby community for uh, creating Ruby motion um, wrappers, DSLs, and things like that. So normal Ruby, Ruby gems will not work. Um, and it has to be loaded. And as I said, it has to be loaded in your, um, in your uh, rake file. Um, and the, the, the good way and the easy way is to use Bundler. Um, you, you have a gem file where you specify the gems that you want to use. Uh, like um, here I'm using uh, bubble wrap is a Ruby motion gem and motion cocoa pod. Um, combine them with requiring that Bundler file, you, uh, gem file in your uh, rake file. And that's all. And then you ra do rake and the build system will take care of loading all the files, all the Ruby gems, Ruby motion gems rather um, in your application. Which is pretty cool, and we'll see the list of. There has been a you know, lot of contribution. Le the the biggest one is Bubble Wrap, which is uh, which kind of uh, is a wrapper sitting on top of a lot of Objective C code. So that makes your life easy. As we saw that, you know, app dot delegate. The example that we saw is actually using Bubble Wrap. It's it's a, a big sentence that you have to write if you have to grab that instance variable. There is a sugar cube form motion. Form motion helps you to create forms pretty easily um, and that the, the, the list is is big recently um, you know uh, Pixate was launched um, I'm not sure whether if you have heard about it what it does it it helps you to use style sheets and style your controls Cocoa controls and that's all you have colors you have all the style sheets options that you can so yeah it's a moment of happiness for using external libraries yeah so yeah Pixate so it styles your iOS controls using CSS, which is incredible because I loved it. I've started playing with it, with, with this thing and I'm, I'm sure you, if you try it, you are going to love this. So you know, this is before and after. Um, you have, if you see that the, the top border and the, the bottom um, is all blue colored and, and you can control that with just this, this particular style sheet. We are, we are web, web developers. I'm sure everyone knows CSS a little bit. I know a little bit. Um, so I can control or I can just write CSS, Pixate, gem, there is a Ruby motion gem for that. And then you can include that in your application, have a CSS, the CSS will be referenced and it will be directly used in your application. Awesome. I don't have to write that huge code of, you know, this particular control has to be in blue color, shade and all those things. Which we can use CSS, the investment that has been done by web developers. Awesome. Let's look at the other option, Objective-C. Um, the first, there are two ways actually, actually to use Objective-C in your app Ruby motion application. Um, the first one is the statically compiled. So if you may have um, an Objective-C uh, class already, um, you have, someone has already written it, you, are, you have wrote it when you are actually playing with it, and you want to use it directly in your application, um, um, you can just directly use that uh, Objective-C class in your application with a stati static um, parameter that you have to inform to the build system saying that I want to use Objective-C class, you drop that header and implementation file in your inside your vendor directory, uh, which you create um, inside your application. You can actually drop it anywhere you want, but you need to inform the build system the location of the file, um, the .h and .m file, and then build system will take care of compiling, linking, and everything. The other way to use it is, oh yeah, so two things to remember. Um, is to use directly the Xcode project. So if you have an Xcode project um, and you want to use directly in your Ruby motion application, you can use it. Drop it inside vendor directory, the, the convention, um, and inform the build system about the various options that it will be. It's an Xcode library, uh, Xcode project that you want to use. Uh, the name of the project, uh, the target, the .a file, and the header files. And then the build system will take care of including that project direct, directly in your Xcode project in your application. And then you are free to use them as if they are Ruby classes. Which is awesome. 
Coca pod. Um, it's pretty popular in uh, in the cocoa world. Um, it it is distributed as a ruby ruby gem, and what it does is it it is it's like bundler in our world in ruby world. It's a dependency manager for uh, for Objective C projects. You install it as a and it's distributed as a ruby gem. You install it with a with a gem install cocoa pod, and then you do a pod setup. So it's it's all specification that it has um, that uh, are the list of Objective C libraries. And you can you can easily add it for using it in actually Ruby Motion. You have to install Motion Cocoa Pod. Uh, you can go to this URL to see all the. There's a huge investment and um, lot of contribution from the from the Objective C community um, for this. And the way to use it is very simple. After you are done in, done installing Motion Cocoa Pod, um, you have an op Pods option where you specify the pods that you want to use. AF networking is is an is an Objective C library for making um, URL connections, and then you can use um, other ones. Um, I've used it extensively. It's very powerful. Makes your life very easy. Moment of happiness. I forgot the count. Native C. Um, this is something that I have not used it, but I am going to use it in the next project. Um, so for all basic C types like bool and others, you have the corresponding mapping in Ruby, right? We all know that. Um, the C data structures or C structures, it can be mapped to Ruby classes. But there is no mapping for complex data structures in C corresponding to in a Ruby class. And for that, you have to use bridge support. Um, bridge support comes default installed on your, on your MacBook. So you don't have to install it as a separate uh, library. Um, and, and what it essentially does is it's an, it creates an XML file that maps the complex C data structures to your Ruby classes. So that way you can have a, a native C code that you can use directly in your Ruby motion application, which is cool. Interface Builder. Um, uh, I'm sure people have used it. Uh, people have played with that. Um, for me, it was a painful experience because it, it, it always used to crash. Uh, whenever I'm using an uh, interface builder or Xcode, it will crash for no reason. Uh, but yes, there is a sweet spot of interface builder. You can design the whole view or interface your application in um, using interface builder. Um, you can create a nib file, you can create a storyboard file, um, and essentially you can use it directly in your um, um, Objective-C project. What RubyMotion gives is you can have the same storyboard file, drop it into your application, and it will take care of loading that interface for your application. That reduces the amount of code that your application may have, um, and you can use your storyboard and, and nip zip files directly in your application, which is cool because I will. What what I did was design my interface using Xcode in Interface Builder, drop that storyboard file or zip file in my application, and boom, I'm done. I have the interface now. I have to just connect the it with the Ruby classes, and it, build system takes care of. When it loads the storyboard file or zip file, it takes, takes care of linking it with the with this Ruby classes that you will have to define your application, which is awesome. Moment of happiness. Testing, um, you know, we all love testing, and we have, we have to make sure that the code that we are writing um, is testable. Um, so, it comes bundled with um, our spec like framework called MacBacon. Um, it it has all the um, the syntactic sugar that we are used to, um, the assertions, the matches, the before and after blocks, everything is there um, in your spec file. And you just create test cases. One new addition which is very powerful is uh, if you have uh, designed your interface and the question comes, if I have designed my interface or created an interface using storyboard in, um, in the interface builder, can I test it? Yes, you can test it with MacBacon. Um, so there has been contribution. The contribution has started a lot so that it, you can use MacBacon in your uh, Ruby motion application for even testing your views. You can test gestures, you can test um, pinch, and everything can be tested um, with MacBacon, which is powerful. Yes, you may be expecting that now. In every slide, I have that moment of happiness. API DAX. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that is uh, has been uh, you know uh, pushed by the community because it's extremely important that um, um, you know if when you are actually learning Objective C, uh, there is little documentation. There's documentation. A lot of code is there, but it's hard to figure out what is good, what is bad. Um, with API Docs, it's actually a huge investment that was has been done by the community, where all the Objective C classes and their corresponding Ruby classes have been documented here. If 
you go there, you, you can you know, figure out what all classes are there um, and then you can start using it directly in the application, which is, which is pretty cool. That's another moment of happiness. Yeah, so that's all I wanted to cover. Um, I'm open for questions. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. You can use. Uh, there, there have been a, a contribution from the company.